Hello, this is David, and welcome to my review of Tactics Ogre Night of the Lotus. This is a spin-off of the Tactics Ogre Let Us Claim Together, released for the Game Boy Advance and as part of the Ogre Battle series. The game follows a pretty formulaic setup in that you have a battle, you go to the world map, or you're able to go to the shop, buy new characters and equipment and spells before moving on to the next battle and then the succeeding storyline sections. It's very easy to play. If you've played Final Fantasy Tactics, then you know how to play this game. However, the Tactics Ogre series was released before Final Fantasy Tactics, so if anything, Final Fantasy Tactics is a ripoff of Tactics Ogre. The gameplay is that of a turn-based strategy RPG where you have control of eight party members who can die permanently, but unique characters that join you for storyline purposes that cannot permanently die off. However, if your regular party members die, you can really just always go buy new ones. There's a very good variety of the various battlefields you're going to fight in, and as far as the fields go, they pretty much have the same objectives, either to kill all the enemies or to kill the leader. There are multiple endings and branching story paths, although this being an older game, the multiple endings and branching story paths aren't that big of a deal because they don't vary that much from each other. But they are there, and for a Game Boy Advance game released in the early 2000s, I think that's a really good thing. The graphics and sounds are nice and bright and cheery, they're very colorful, and they fit the setting very well. You can easily see everything that's going on, the maps are very detailed with lots of different obstacles to traverse, such as cliffs, rocks, and water, which adds a nice element of strategy. However, I can't be so positive about the sound. It's pretty much the same tracks over and over and over again. As far as the leveling up is concerned, it's not so bad. They did a nice job with this system. There's a training mode where your characters can fight against each other to gain experience, but also experience gained scales throughout the game, similar to the Sakoden series. For example, if a level 10 character attacks another level 10 character, it won't gain them much experience. But if a level 1 character attacks the same level 10 character, you will probably gain an entire level in one hit. So those are the positives of the game. But let me also tell you about some of the negatives, starting with useless spells. You pretty much only need the elemental attack spells as well as the healing spells, but there's also a metric ton of other effect spells, like spells that change the weather, which are entirely useless. Speaking of other useless things, let's talk about the classes. There are many, many classes to choose from, but some are exponentially better than others such as the godly ninja and knights. They completely eclipse classes like the witch, who specializes in the aforementioned useless effect magic. There's also beast masters and dragon tamers, and they pretty much suck. And those are the advanced classes. You can seriously win the game by just using ninjas and knights, one priest, maybe a wizard or hawkman for some variety if you really want them, or, if you just want to steamroll the game, use four knights and four ninjas. Also, to add insult to injury, the knight and ninja classes are going to be pretty much the first classes that you gain. The way that you gain those classes is through the emblem system. By doing various actions in battle, you gain emblems. For example, you gain the sniper emblem by killing an enemy with a bow and an arrow, and that would allow one particular character to become the archer class. There are many different ways to go about gaining these emblems and classes, but for the most part, it's a fool's errand because why bother? The Knight and Ninja do everything that you're ever going to need anyway. So it's actually kind of a nice positive that you really don't need to stress yourself out over the class or emblem systems. The storyline is enjoyable, but it honestly just boils down to 20 hours of YOU MUST GET THE SPEAR! It's pretty bare bones, but good. Finally, the AI in the game is pretty terrible. It's not the worst that I've ever seen, but what the enemy units do is that they pretty much just go out and attack everybody, equally. They never really focus on one guy, so while you're busy ganging up on that one guy and slaughtering them, they're still hitting all of your characters, and you're never really in danger of dying. You'll pretty much finish every battle with everyone at 50% HP. However, this is also a blessing in disguise since the game does feature permadeath. It's kind of nice to not have to worry about it. All in all, I would say that this game is a gem for the Game Boy Advance, and I would highly recommend playing it. This has been David.
And if you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And have a good day.